Warning, this game's setting revolves around an active Middle East combat zone and contains references to extreme violence, graphic content, and other mature themes. Listener discretion is advised. The Rancor's Brothel presents... Want some whiskey in your water, sugar in your tea? With all these crazy questions that are asking me, the craziest body that could ever be. So turn on the lights, cause I don't want to see. My little told me not to come. My little told me not to come. That ain't the way to have fun, son. Iconoclast, a campaign of horrors modern and ancient. Uh, anything else anyone wants to do, or should we move to the next day? Next day, next day, next day. Hopefully Are we doing any of the signet stuff today? No, okay. but I have not forgotten. I've got a note. Thank you. Um, uh, the big thing, unless you want to narrate anything else, I'm going to take you to London. No, nope. let's go. Kasim and Hastings arrive in London. Hey. Uh, you get a phone call shortly after arriving in Heathrow. That is what I'm dubbing that for her. Uh, on a cell. <laughs> nice. Uh, yes. Okay. Who's cell? Probably Hastings. That couldn't be better, by the way. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. She'll answer. Uh, actually, Spencer hasn't got to play. Hey, could be Casino. Okay. Hello. Uh, looks like your flight has landed. Are you uh, are you through customs yet? It's uh, Quinn. Yeah. No, not quite. Uh, that way. I'm gonna text you a number. Mm-hmm. Now I need you to make this clear. Mm-hmm. Also to Hastings, especially to Hastings. <laughs> yeah, copy that. An approved researcher, a consultant, shall we say, has been identified. All right. Uh, a Professor Hale. Okay. Got it. You are not to tell Professor Hale why you're looking for tablets. Mm-hmm. You may show photos or small translations of what you have to Professor Hale. Mm-hmm. At no time should Professor Hale, prof- should she be shown any of the work in a complete or organized fashion based on your research. Okay. And if uh, that accidentally happens, do it we need- better not. <laughs> Would we deal with it if it accidentally happens? I'm leaving space in here for the editor because um, the term pregnant pause isn't quite appropriate. I believe the term pinter pause is most accurate. Mm-hmm. Um, what you've suggested or making that incident or making that mistake mm-hmm. of what I've directed, the phrase international incident doesn't cover it. Roger that. And he hangs up. What do you want? Oh, nothing. <laughs> We're good. <laughs> Just uh, we got to keep Professor Hale in the dark is all you need. Who's to Hale? Hail, hail. I can't read my own handwriting. Well, we're all right. <laughs> buzz, buzz. Uh, you have a text message with a phone number. Okay, got it. <laughs> you should share your uh, motivation with the class. Huh? You wrote it down under motivations. Oh, uh, in mental disorders. Elder God complex. <laughs> <laughs> That is another Rancor's Brothel t shirt. <laughs> I have what's known as an, in parentheses, elder god complex. <laughs> I love it. Okay, what do you want to do? You're through customs, you're at Heathrow. You've mainly maybe been given information through Kazim. Were we given instructions on where to go, where to stay, who to talk to? or All you know is about your approved researcher. Okay. You can do whatever you want. You do know, obviously, <laughs> that the British Museum has Pop. direct. Um, Pop down to the Winchester, have a pint, wait for this. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. You do know that um, Gwyn got you this access at some cost. You know, he he was very adamant and pushy about this. But you could also obviously go and look at the files at the British Museum if, if you so choose. Um, so we'll we'll text our contact, set up a meeting time. Probably stay somewhere within a half mile of where we're researching. Um, not like a hostel, but not like a three-star hotel, something smaller. And um, yeah, I'd like to go to the museum. Okay. So what do you text? Um, What's up, bro? <laughs> you up? <laughs> um, when he mentions Hale, Professor Hale, do does Hastings know anything about a Professor Hale? Uh, who would be of use going through stuff like this? So I would allow... That be? I would allow either of you what I, I guess a bureaucracy role might be good if either of you have bureaucracy. Hell yeah, bro. I got a 35. Under 44. No. 
Um, you, you wouldn't be positive, but I mean, Kazim does have a PhD in history and Middle Eastern studies at Harvard. So, I mean, it's not like you're, it's not like Kazim is an uneducated man. Yeah, no, we, we could navigate the bureaucracy of this. No, right. So the thing is, is that you would know other educators, even if it's not necessarily 100% in your wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. You do know that there is a former professor, Hale, um, who taught at, um, who was an archaeology professor at the University of Cambridge. Professor... Uh, I believe you would pronounce it Emmeline. Professor Emmeline Her Hale, recently retired um, professor of Mesopotamian archaeology at the University of Cambridge. That sounds right up our alley. Let's head there. Um, uh, w sorry, what day of the week is it? I don't know. Okay. It's it May 9th. May 9th. I was going to say. Uh, whatever May 9th, 2016 is. Let's look at it. Look at it. May 9th. Monday. It's a Monday. It's beginning of the week. Perfect. Um, let's uh, email our uh, contact, Professor Hale. Um, I'll do um, a generic greeting and talk about some of my credentials. And um, you're emailing? Wait, no, texting. Yeah, because uh, we have the number, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. were just sent a phone number. Um, and ask if uh, she's in office and just let her know our my my credentials and ask if uh, she's available the today. Even uh, the phone rings. Does someone answer it? No, no, no. Your phone rings. Oh, my phone. Yeah, yeah. Hello. Uh, yes. Um, uh, good morning, uh, Professor Almala. Uh, correct, Harvard. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes. Um, and I presume it is uh, um, uh, um, Professor Hastings is with you as well, Doctor Hastings. Yes. Uh, I yes. suppose formally I should both call you doctors. Of course, my my apologies. Um, yes, yes, yes. Um, they said you'd be calling. Um, pleasure to meet you. Uh, you as well. Appreciate your time. Yes, I, I'm sorry. I don't. Um, I don't get out all that much. Um, lady of my years, of course. Um, but um, I'd be happy to speak with you. Um, if you don't mind coming out to the house. Um, again, uh, it's all been arranged. Happy to assist. Uh, if you'd like to bring whatever you've got, um, I'll see what I can do to help. Of course. And uh, while we're out, uh, my colleague and I are uh, we're, we're, we're picking up some food. Can we get you something? Oh, no. Don't worry about that. I'm a uh, little old ladies. A uh, little bit of tea and biscuit. Nothing you need to worry about. Huh. All right. As long as you save some tea and biscuits for us. Of course. Of course. It, we'll is, the, it is the polite thing to do uh, when <laughs> inviting uh, folks into the country. All right. We'll be there. Of course. She gives you... I missed the first part of this. Does this feel like a setup of any kind, or is this legit? I have no idea. We might die. Okay. <laughs> So no, as I, I'm I'm at ninety percent, ninety five percent. She's just a uh, an older professor that we're getting info info from. But right, but I want to know who called her uh, and told her we were coming. Uh, the uh, British program, right? I'm assuming. Yeah, that's that's my thought. She tells you to meet her about. Uh, she knows. Uh, um, I guess I could do a little bit more here and make it a little bit more narrative. Um, no, no, don't. Uh, uh, she gives you an address. Um, she says I'm about uh, fifty five kilometers um, outside of London. Uh, take you a little bit to get here. Um, no rush. Um, if you'd like to show up at tea time, that's fine. Uh, if not, uh, I could definitely meet you uh, later on in the afternoon or evening if you prefer. Oh, we just got in country and we're getting settled. Well, uh, l late afternoon would be perfect. Of course, of course. Um, again, uh, if there's anything uh, you need, uh, don't hesitate to give me a ring. Uh, but uh, I feel like it told me where her house was. And then it just says on this page, uh, 55 kilometers from the British Museum. If you look it up, if you look at the address, it is sort of a country i wouldn't say necessarily say say a state um but it is it is definitely incredibly rural okay got a picture here i can share with you i suppose it's quite nice nice looking home very pastoral it is it is incredibly british pastoral rolling hills sheep and the like dun 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 yes, dun 100%. dun <laughs> Enough saying. Next on uh, lifestyles of the bridge and family. Crawley, <laughs> Crawley, Sussex. So she lives in Sussex. All right. Take a piss. Would you like to take over the narration, Jeff, while your professor Almala um, takes a piss? Yeah. yeah, sure. He said, "Have a pint at the Winchester." And now I want to chase another Guinness. It's not quite foamy enough to play rings, so it also has a metallic taste when it comes out of a can. Much preferred off draft. I'm long overdue for a good beer. Guinness on draft is like I enjoy. I mean, obviously, listeners, this podcast think probably too much, but I enjoy consuming alcohol of an occasion. But oh, it, that is pretty. It's always affected me. But like the only thing that I think I've never felt affected by is pints of Guinness. I've been to like Irish pubs where I've down like a you know six pints and not just because I don't know if you ever talked about they talk about how many rings you have because the foam of the head as it slides down will leave rings on the opposite side that you drink I'm typically a two ringer <laughs> so I look up and I go oh shit another pint <laughs> nice 
To be fair, though, Guinness is like 4% alcohol, so it's barely alcohol. Yeah. Yes, Sussex is gorgeous. I wasn't there while I was in England, um, but it's very pretty. Quite pastoral. It's one of the things that I wish I had done more while I was there. They tried to get you to go on some trips. I went on one or two of them, but I really wish I had gone on all of them. Although, now I'm curious. Where's Stratford? Because Spencer and I took a romantic trip to Stratford together, um, which was very interesting. I'm curious where it, I know you, you. I'm pretty sure it's south, but I don't know how far south it is in England. I have no clue. We stayed at a bed and breakfast um, with a nice elderly couple in Stratford upon Avon, where Spencer and I went to the Royal Shakespeare Company to see Romeo and Juliet. We specifically asked for bed and breakfast uh, for for a room with two beds, during which no one in that house believed Spencer and I were not sleeping in the same bed. <laughs> It's because you didn't. <laughs> uh, it actually was not two beds. It was a bed and a day bed, which does not count as a bed. Um, so I got a horrible night's sleep. Spencer and I were also, I remember, let's see if he remembers it. We were so fucking hungry because Stratford is so small. It's basically like Shakespeare's home, the museum attached to it, the theater, and fuck all else. <laughs> so we didn't... <laughs> We didn't eat because we had been used to living in York and the pubs were open. So we went in and we saw Romeo and Juliet. We came out thinking we were going to get fucking dinner. The train stations were shut down. There were no cars. There was nothing. It was like being in fucking Red Key. It was like there was nothing. And I remember going back and watching TV in the hotel's room and there was like a complimentary like like tin of biscuits or crackers or something. That's what Spencer and I ate for the whole fucking evening. You had crumpets. <laughs> Do you remember that? Hmm? At that bed and breakfast? Oh, I don't remember shit, bro. Okay. Ever. <laughs> I was talking about a romantic trip trip to Stratford. Oh, that was beautiful. It was. It was um, fun. But I remember we went to the show, and we didn't pay to eat or drink at the show because it was fucking expensive, thinking no. we could go to a pub afterwards, and then everything in Stratford was closed. Yeah. And there was like some little complimentary tin of like crackers or something that that, that was all that we ate that evening. Nice. <laughs> I just remember uh, eating just very mediocre bangers and mash. Gosh, uh, they did fried tomatoes that morning, though. That was uh, really, really uh, good. That was good. We had to take like six trains to get there. And they got progressively shittier as the farther oh, we yeah, went. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they totally thought we were sleeping together, though. 100%. Yeah. Eh. Hey, I don't mind being mistaken for being gay with you, Cody. That's true. Yeah. I was also thinking about the only about the only person I've ever gone anywhere to a club with or done or been around EDM <laughs> with has basically been you. So uh, uh, uh. that's that's England for you, bro. <laughs> so Sussex. 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 Professor Hale, anything you you gentlemen would like to do now that you've you're in London? Uh, I mean, get settled somewhere. Um, sure. Get a hotel near the museum if you like. Yeah. Um, get one with a window that overlooks the entrance. Yeah, to the that's building. what I thought. Um, <laughs> what's that? Oh, nothing. <laughs> Doing the what? What is? Oh fuck! What was it from Doctor No? Where you see uh, um, Sean Connery do the pulls out the piece of hair and puts it on all the doors <laughs> to see if someone's come in the doors. Hey, that, that's fucking genius. It is. Scotch tape works too. I always wanted to be a spy. Yeah, get settled. Get ready to head to Sussex. I guess. Sure. Mm -hmm. Go right ahead. You travel to Sussex. Yes, we do. Okay. Again, very pastoral. Um, you see a mid-sized house. Um, you hear loud barking inside when you knock upon the door. Uh, deep, um, like a, a deeper bark or like a fucking ankle biter bark. Oh no no no! Like like deep bark. <gasps> yeah. Hoof hoof. <laughs> Newfoundland. Irish Wolfhound. Yeah, oh, even better. Yeah. Um, you see the door creak open. You see um an elderly Caucasian woman, uh, silvery white hair done up in a bob of a style you know that's at least 40 or 50 years out of date. Um, uh, beside her stands a nearly six foot tall Irish wolfhound. Um, <laughs> <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Uh, ah, ah, uh, doctor, uh, doctor, doctor Almala, uh, doctor Hastings. I know my Grady dog barks. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome to my home. Uh, pay no attention to Oak. Please come in. Uh, I'll put the kettle on. She shows you in. I pull up a, I put up a hand to the dog, you know, in that way that you, you're yeah. not, yeah, to, to sniff. Oh yeah, no. If, now that the door is open and she's invited you in, uh, the wolf hound. Like a vampire. Yeah. Pays no mind. Okay. Um, when she invites you in, um, both of you probably are actually very interested. It's a midsize, it's a midsize house. Um, we would consider it probably relatively small in the United States, but for England, it's actually a relatively decent size. She has land. Um, she's in farmland, so she's not actually near anyone. She doesn't really have neighbors. Uh, you're kind of out, like I said, very pastoral area. Um, you see that her house is overtaken by books and bookshelves. At a quick glance, you can see, you can see dozens of titles. Titles uh, on history, the occult, espionage, 
mythology, archaeology, religion. Both of you see, both of you know multiple languages. You probably see books in every language that you know and maybe a few that you only recognize. Huh. Um, but she takes you through a, a narrow hallway and she indicates um, a small like sort of a um, couple of very stiff couches with a little uh, sort of coffee table in, bet- in between them. Uh, please uh, do have a seat. I'll, uh, I'll pop the kettle on and uh, be right back to chat. Thank you. So she leaves you for a few minutes alone as you can hear her. Just another door down sort of banging and banging away. And <laughs> hey, Judge, um, dumb ass question. What, what are we, what are we brought the wing, winds of a dodge? Uh, yes, we got to we got to find out what what exactly she is going to be, be a help on. Um, is there anything on the walls? Pictures? Just a reminder, you're not allowed to show it to her in chronological or in in full. Um, You're not seeing a lot of personalization, really. You're seeing a lot of um, like nothing. that There are no pictures of 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 children, of relatives, anything like that. You see a lot of uh, you see degrees, you see awards, um, maybe some group shots of academia, um, but nothing personal. It looks like a college professor's office that exploded into an entire house. Yeah. Anything of herself like on location places um like this is a historical dig and she was on it type no thing. It, it's it's definitely very much um it, it's definitely very much academic based so yeah. outside of cambridge you know maybe a couple of other locations but you can tell she's very academic she's not she's definitely not indiana jones right there is no laura croft to professor hale okay she's she's read all she knows not gone and found Correct. it yes I think then for us, Jeff, the goal here is to have her fill in the holes in our knowledge that we have, but to do so in a way that is purposefully out of order and would provide her no context as to the big picture of what we're doing. Right. I I think you're both smart enough to know that she's smart enough to know that she's going to know that you're trying to mislead her. Yeah. (laughs) It's not even that we're so much trying to mislead her. It's like not to make her a vector. It's okay. How much of the stuff that we know we don't have do we know? You're not a hundred percent sure. You you definitely have identified some gaps. Some gaps. Okay. If you want to talk talk turkey, you know some gaps. You don't know all your gaps. Okay, but I can show her the gaps. I can show her the 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 bookends. Correct. You could and definitely say, do that. I, I need I need what's in the middle. Sure. I figured uh, that depending on the way that circumstances set up, I wasn't sure which way you guys are going to play it. So yes, you could most definitely mechanically ask for that and see what happens. Okay. But I also figured that you guys would fumble fuck your way around into some other interesting avenues as well. Right. So. Yeah. Uh, also, something to keep in mind: Gwen said this was an approved researcher. I, I I'm going to get to that. Okay. Yeah. Which mm. means that it wasn't approved by Gwen. It yeah. was approved it, by who let us come. Is it? Is it approved by ours or yours? <laughs> um, as you thought, swirling in your head, small talk, you sort of look around. There'd be some knickknacks on the wall, maybe some 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 pottery, some awards, whatever. So you could sort of poke around politely. Um, I imagine, again, kind of a, a couple of couches, maybe a fireplace, you know, uh, um, a nice little sort of conversation table um i presumably you two have sat beside each other on one of the settees you know and she she comes trundling in um sets down a very old sort of traditional pewter um tea set up actual china sugar lumps the whole nine yards um and you see the the wolfhound kind of curls up uh next to the chair um and she says ah yes she begins doing sort of a traditional tea service uh sugar sugar you know she pours it up yes please um drops some lumps of sugar in if you request it passes them along saucers the whole nine yards she's got some cloth napkins there um maybe a little little tin of biscuits that's probably the only thing that is out of place it's probably just a store-bought sort of uh tin of digestives or something it's it's nothing homemade digestives Uh, um uh, welcome to england she sort of you know lifts up her cup and sort of sits back in her chair and just sort of drinks very in a very relaxed tone cheers uh what can i do for you uh fellow academics well uh we are we're here to go through some tablets at the British Museum. Yes. Do uh, go on. Familiar with Acadian? Yes. Yes, I am. I, I I'm sorry. I don't I don't know your 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 specialties. Understood. Are- she goes through um she'll give you kind of a, a basic resume. Uh-huh. Um <laughs> I had a couple of interviews this week uh, for a couple of jobs at work, and it has become a tick of mine to write down on 
on their uh, on their resume every time they confidently <laughs> use a word that they're mispronouncing because it bothers the <laughs> fuck out of me. <laughs> And then I immediately bring it up with the person I interview with. I was like, did you realize they mispronounced or miss? It's more when you confidently use a word like, you know, are you sure that they're mispronouncing it? Because I've heard you use a lot of words very <laughs> confidently that you're mispronouncing. Jeff. <laughs> roll sand. Jefe, roll sand. <laughs> Most of those are fantasy bullshit words, Jeff. So <laughs> go fuck yourself. Um, like mints of barons and <laughs> Bayon Ray. Yeah. <laughs> it's Bon Ray, Jeff. Bon Ray. He did. Oh got him. Some more traditional way as opposed to the Hoosier translation that you've got. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Um, uh, so she is a retired professor of Mesopotamian archaeology. Uh, she was at the University of Cambridge from 1999 to recently retired in the last couple of years. Um, she obviously is an expert in archaeology. Um, her, she very much, um, uh, she, uh, um, what do I want to say? She is a foremost expert in Akkadian. Um, she would talk shop. What's your score in Akkadian? 40. 40. No, 65. Wow. You get the sense that she probably, like, in the shop talk, mechanically speaking, you probably know Akkadian better than she does, but she is no slouch. Right. Um, the big thing is that, that that makes a lot of sense to you is that she's talking about it because you guys did bring up Winds Unknown to a Dot already, right? Mm-hmm. Um, well, we, we said tablets. We hadn't gone I thought too much. Said, Not to her. They, they had the side conversation. Yeah, oh, no, that's, yeah, I'm yeah. just trying to make sure that I know. Um, um, so, yeah, she kind of goes through goes through the steps. Mm-hmm. Um, just kind of giving a basic history of herself for the last 15 years or so in terms of academia. Yes, I do take um, side research projects from time to time. Obviously, I'm, I'm an old woman that enjoys my, my house and my dog and my books. But um, yes, um, my understanding is that you needed some translation of Akkadian tablets. And it sounds like it's something that would be of, of interest to me. Yeah. Uh, obviously, I'm, the house is not cheap, um, but I would definitely uh, be willing to be a research partner for an appropriate fee. OK, uh, I'm assuming that Hastings would know about what an appropriate fee for. Oh, she'll quote you. OK. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you get the sense that it, it is not a small fee and that it comes with strings, but she's too polite to say and is waiting to see what you say next. She's waiting for the next interjection of the exchange. Uh, so please do tell me more exactly. What are you doing and uh, what is it that you're looking for help with more precisely? Well, actually, I was I was curious. Uh, our point of contact said that you were an approved researcher, research assistant. Sure. Um, that sounds appropriate. You approved by ours or theirs? Or ours or yours. Oh, well. See, I, I, I'm not sure how things are done on this uh, on this side of the pond, but for the most part, we're treated like mushrooms, and I'm not sure exactly what the situation is here. <laughs> um, understood, she says, and sort of knowingly and thoughtfully takes a sip of tea. Let's just say your situation was brought up to the appropriate people, and that I have been approved to assist. Um, again, as I said, I, I come with my own special needs and, and fee, but um, otherwise we can um, work amicably. Um, there's no need to bring any of that into the situation as far as I am concerned. Well, no. I prefer not to speak about it, honestly. But. Not knowing the full depth of the situation that we're walking into, I'd like to not step on anybody's toes if I can avoid it. Of course. Is there some toe stepping you feel that you might be doing? Not intentionally, no. Of course. Um, nothing that we're conversing about would has any um, potential of um, trotting on your partner's toes in the dance as it were okay if we if we start coming anywhere near any toes that you are aware of please of, co- of course yes yes um you see like green gamma symbols <laughs> because it came before delta um heading into london how uh what what kind of um what kind of situation do you need uh lodging i am i'm assuming you don't want to travel back and forth uh, yes no um um uh i i um i prefer the cheshire hotel uh if at all possible um, uh, my going rate is uh 300 pounds a day um uh, arranging the the transport and lodging uh i would appreciate just because it is a bit difficult for me to get around I, absolutely i usually call a car i'm not uh, i don't drive myself anymore it's quite dangerous out there modern times and all she says taking a knowing sip of tea and staring at you over the saucer of course we'll arrange it all this is just the kind of character grady wants to play 
a subtly pompous old bat. <laughs> um, but, um, gentlemen, you've you tried to tell Daisy me room. what it yeah. is that I will be researching. Well, uh, we're, we're trying to figure out what we're missing. Okay. Uh, we'll, we will give you kind of the, the bookends of what we have, and I need to find what goes in the middle. Understood. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, please continue. Uh, how familiar are you with the Winzo Nundu Adad? The Asher Burnapal. Uh, Ash Uber, Ash or er, Asher Bonapal. The Asher Bonapal collection. You need someone to go through that. Yes, it's it's been a few years, but I'm quite familiar with it at the British Museum. Fascinating. What did you find? Um what do, what does Hastings know about the Asher Bonapal collection? Asher bon- the Asher Bonapal collection is the British Museum's version of the Winds Unknown to Adopt. Oh, okay. The Asher Bonapal collection. I told you guys about this at one point. I'm I'm yeah. sure you did. The British Museum holds thousands of clay tabs tablets excavated from the library of Ashurbanipal in Nineveh during two digs in the mid-19th century. Okay. This uh, is the shit that Britain walked off with. Correct. Okay. So they are the the library of Ashurbanipal in Nineveh. Um, they ended up with 30,943 tablets collected in 1849 and 1852. All of them have been digitally photographed and stored in searchable databases, but are only local, not online. Gotcha. So there are 30,000, whatever I said, tablets that are sort of indexed, but not really. Right. Whatever Rassam didn't have, though, it's there. Yeah. So we are working with the Baghdad Museum to uh, resort and catalog their collection. Because, yeah, right. uh, yeah a, lot of, a, lot, a lot of things have been misplaced and, and basically trashed due Might to be. everything that's going on <laughs> in the area. Of course, of course, makes sense, I suppose. Okay. Do you want more? I don't think you want more. (laughs) Well, I'll tell you this, gentlemen. Um, I don't think you're telling me the full truth, which is to be expected. Um, I do think that the legitimate source of your information would be useful if you cannot give it, or if it is, in fact, at the Baghdad Museum. I'll work with that. She might know. We're helping fill in gaps at the Baghdad Museum from a third collection. It's sort of what I expected. Uh, again, not to what was the what was the parlance you used? Step on any toes. It may be useful to know more about the third collection, but if you cannot explain, I understand. He doesn't have any more toes. Um, hmm. uh, did, did you know Rassam or know of Rassam? I can't remember his first name. But I think Rassam is his first name. No, Rassam was the last name. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, Spencer, make a D100 roll. You got a boss. 41. Tariq R- Muhammad Rassam. Uh, I can't say that I'm I'm familiar. Uh, please, uh, again, without stepping on anyone's toes, uh, do go on. Uh, Kazim knows she's lying. Uh, we're helping integrate his collection into the Baghdad Museum. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate your honesty. I know that obviously you are probably under certain restrictions, and I completely understand and, and can work under those conditions. But being at least semi-familiar with the Baghdad Museum and knowing that you're bringing in a third collection arises the opportunity that there is some mixture of bookends, which may in fact be helpful. So I appreciate I appreciate you letting me know that. Thank you. Um, I imagine it will take um, several weeks of work, depending on how many gaps we're talking about looking into and what all we can do. But... Uh, um, I would be happy if you're willing to pay my fee, and, and I know that it's a little bit difficult, but I, I am very familiar with um, the collection and um, the staff there, and I think I could be of use to you if you'd like to hire me. Uh, yes, uh, we'll work out your fee. That's fine. Uh, we'll put you up $300. at the what the Cheshire. Uh, yes, if, if it's not too much of an imposition. <clears throat> I no Hastings would know. Uh, she spent plenty of time in London. What the whether the Cheshire is way out of line or not? I but, don't know, but I imagine it is. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you, you're being taken a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm curious now. Um, C E S H I R. Yeah, I know how to spell Cheshire. Well, you told me I mispronounce words all the time, so I figured I'd better spell it. Um, As you up. pull up the page, it says Cheshire Beauty Supply or <laughs> Beauty Salon. And- <laughs> <laughs> it was like in uh, Impossible Landscapes. There's a fictitious hotel called the Hotel Brottlebin. And so we were playing and I kept saying Hotel Brottlebin. And they're like, it's here. It's real. Because someone opened a Hotel Brottlebin in like 2021 or something. Nice. Fuck. 1.3352 uh, is the exchange rate. Was the average exchange rate. So $1.33 for per, per pound. To the pound. Okay. 400 bucks a day, give or take. That's, that's nice money. So you're looking at... 
492 feet from the British Museum. <laughs> She's an old lady. It takes it, a little while to shuffle. <laughs> it's actually not too expensive. <laughs> for for that close to the museum. I mean, you are right in kind of in the thick of things. Yeah, well, you no. also have to remember that uh, you're paying both her fee and the cost per day. So probably yeah, no, about no, we're good. bucks a day. Yeah, no, it's it's not that bad. Like for ten thousand, we can do this for ten thousand or less. Okay, that's a fifth of the funds we have left. Oh shoot! <laughs> <laughs> Who spent all the money? Oh, right, and we're, right. how are we going to do this for ten thousand or less? If it's a th- roughly, how much is it a day? Seven hundred pounds. Yeah, it depends. I mean, it depends on. I mean, what's the, what? What did you say the exchange rate is? One point three four dollars or pounds. Uh, one point three four dollars per pound. pound. Okay. So, <laughs> how expensive is the hotel? You said. Uh, like hundred bucks. Okay, I'm being in like hundred thirty bucks. <laughs> <laughs> the, it's the English Motel Six. <laughs> so you're looking at that's a Cheshire Hotel London, uh, Central London from ninety dollars on kayak, but. <laughs> Well, <laughs> but it's more like, yeah, it's more like 140. <laughs> Kayak starts at 99. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. <coughs> I'm easily going to think it, it's it's 500 to 700 a day, I would imagine. Yeah. Total cost, in, including her fee plus hotel, you're probably looking. At- uh, I don't know. It's uh, uh, Kasim will sleep in the alley. There we go. <laughs> no, he won't. <coughs> Well, we were trying to hawk some stuff with the mercenaries, so. We were. Some pretty valuable things there, Code. Yeah, you could definitely attempt to do that. We kind of started that ball rolling already, didn't we? I believe they were checking on some buyers or something yeah. or another. I don't have that in my notes. That doesn't mean it didn't happen. Jeff's editing it, so he can let me know eventually if I'm wrong. You guys have talked about it a lot, but I don't know that you've ever done it. Because originally, you were going to fence the items for them. Mm-hmm. Take a cut. Correct. Yeah. Because you gave them the items in order to get where you're at now yeah i'm can we can we actually officially put that on your list of we want to start doing that yeah you just need to give me somebody who it is and actually have the oh that's right you guys made fun of me no, because it's 100 bucks a day 100 110 to 120 okay should be so, so yeah we'll say it's it's roughly 500 bucks a day just don't spend a whole month there with the acadian martha stewart well you can't because <clears throat> we don't have that kind of money <laughs> Uh, I'm going to call Gwen. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, right there in the in no. the sitting room? No. Okay. <laughs> Just... No, but one, once we get... Did you pick out the most expensive bitch on the list? <laughs> <laughs> once we get her situated, we head back. I, I'll i call Gwen on the way back while he's driving back. Any any, any other interaction you want to have with her? Um... No, I mean, the more talking we do, the more we get ourselves in trouble. Yeah, I know. So, um, but I'm not the one who realized she was lying. What? You want to call her on, on anything or no? I, I think, wait, who no, realized that you, was you? You made the you role. You made the role. He asked you when he talked about when he talked about Tariq Rassam, she said uh, no. I didn't but, realize that, that was based on my role. Yep. No. Uh, Kasim okay. knows she is lying. She, you don't know how or what, but she does recognize Rasam's name. No, I want to, I want to hold that as an ace up my sleeve. Okay. Um, anything else I can assist you gentlemen with? Uh, no, uh, we will, we'll set up a, a room for you. Uh, we'll call you with the details. Um, when can you start? Um, I don't know if you can get everything arranged, but I'd be happy to make the, the trek tomorrow. Okay. If you could get a car out here that early, um, I'll pack this evening. Okay. Um, can, can we share a hotel room? Romantic. I'm cheating on Cody with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jeff's going to be a lot warmer. <laughs> nice. Um, you'll I, ne- you'll never go back. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I want to, as Kasim, communicate with, uh, Susan that, um, writing, I don't want to say it out loud because we are constantly being watched and we are constantly being bugged. Uh, I want to write out that what I learned or what I intuited that, uh, she's laying about Rassam. Well, let's, let's, let's just follow it in order so we don't get anything screwed mm-hmm. up. So you are now on the car ride back. You mm-hmm. suggested that you want to call Gwen. Is that something you do no, want right. to do? It is. Okay. Um, do, let, yeah, let's do Gwen first. Okay. Okay. So you call. Uh, yeah. No, I. He, it would take priority, even if, though he is not super happy with your task force. He would. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Go. Gwen, it's Gwen. Go. Met with Hale. Uh. We're going to need to requisition more funds. Fuck. I can't just pull this shit out of nowhere. I already gave you. What What happened to the money I already gave you? That should be plenty. It's not that much money. Uh. It's not all gone, but. <laughs> 
a fair chunk of it went to digging 30 ISIL members out of Rassam's compound. Compound, yeah. The CIA blew it up. Fuck's sake. <laughs> okay. Um, God. Uh, I'll see what I can do, but I don't think it's not going to be easy and it's not going to be fast. Okay. Give us the money. Any help is appreciated. Okay. Let's just fence it. We don't need those motherfuckers. Let's just fence this shit. Let's do it. Sell some. I had to spend a few weeks as adjunct faculty, boys. (laughs) (laughs) That's that's why we were looking up um, trash on Irene. We were going to try and extort her. I remember that now. Mm-hmm. So I want to communicate as Kasim to Susan that our new friend is lying. She you guys knows- know all those languages. You know, ASL. Just write down ASL. <laughs> um, but I, I just want to do it in a very secretive way, as we are in our own. You could do whatever you want, however you want to do. Write it down in our own personal hotel room, and I, I also want to, and then I, I just want to, I just want to Cody. I want to make very clear that I'm being super, super sneaky. Sure. Um, But I want to communicate to Susan that I am mildly interested in going back and searching this chick's house, to be honest. (laughs) Um, Who was driving? I was. D100 roll, please. A 57. Okay. Uh, over 20. <laughs> you didn't pass your alertness roll to see if someone was following you. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, we can go with that. Take your alertness. No, take it. You've already oh, failed, take failed it. it. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're back and you you communicate in Acadia and who knows what the fuck you write it down. Yeah, you, you, you've shared that information. You now can converse back and forth, but I understand that you are doing it in the most secretive way possible. How is you're your... both in the bathroom with the fan on. Um, <laughs> you've checked for bugs. You've Stripped down naked. The shower is on, and you Thank wrote you. it. In and the, you wrote it in the steam in the mirror, <laughs> fucking mirror. in a different language. Don't forget to put your watch in a chip bag. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how your alertness isn't perfect at this point because you failed every single one you've ever. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I feel like somebody's not upping their ticks. <laughs> I haven't. Yeah, I'm just good. messing with you. <laughs> He never knew he was being followed in Greece. <laughs> <laughs> now he doesn't. <laughs> he's he's the fucking uh, Mr. Magoo. Uh, <laughs> hey, but look at it this way. When it happens, you'll be fine. <laughs> It'll be quick and easy. Not, Mag- not Magoo, because Magoo was pompous. Like, but in a, in a, in a, I don't know. You strike me more as Clouseau. It's a more Clouseau. <laughs> Mr. Bean. Yes. <laughs> I fucking love the Pink Panther movies. <laughs> now I, I get- just see Spencer doing that. Can we do that on Amazon Watch? I would love to do that. Have you ever seen any of the Pink Panther movies? I have not. Oh my god. Can we stream that? I don't I'm know. Do we'll have to look. Those are good. They're so I mean, good. Worst case scenario, we can just watch to get, or stream together through Discord. Yeah. I will not find yeah. a more confident man about his ignorance than... <laughs> Grusa! <laughs> <laughs> Fucking that door swinging open. Fucking guy falling out the window. <laughs> Keep going back. <laughs> broken arm, broken leg. What the fuck did he... Kato! He had the fucking... God damn it. <laughs> He had the Chinese servant who was always wearing all black and was trying to attack him in the middle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what was his name? Kato. Kato. Kato, Kato you fool! Karate yeah. chop him in the throat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Fucking Clouseau. Clouseau, you idiot. So good. Yeah, God, this movie's so good. Time to those. I think I own them all on DVD. I remember at one point they were on sale at like Walmart. And of course the Walmart in Portland didn't price them. Like they're classic films, but nobody gave a shit. So I was buying all of them for like five bucks. Yep. Shit. It's available on HBO. <laughs> oh, it is. <laughs> Which one, though? The Pink Panther. There's there's seven. Is it the one, one with Steve Martin? No. It is the 1963 version. Yep. Gotcha. It's not the first one, though. The first one's called A Shot in the Dark. Oh. A Shot in the Dark is... A Shot in the Dark is not really a Pink Panther movie, but it later sort of became a Pink Panther movie. It might be my favorite. Also available on Max. They're really good, like, uh, like what the fuck is his name? The the French detective, Poirot. Oh, yeah. If Poirot, if Mr. Magoo pretended to be Poirot, that's who Inspector Clouseau is. Yeah. Like, just utterly coming, the murderer is in this room, while meanwhile his fucking jacket is on fire because he's <laughs> leaned up against the fireplace. Like, I know who the murderer is. And then, like, everything falls over. And just, but he just ends up always fucking stumbling into the right goddamn answer, like... Anyway, yes, you are riding backwards in Acadian (laughs) on the steam in the mirror, completely naked, (laughs) shower and fan on. Nice. Anything else you'd like to share with each other? So, do you want to go? Do you want to go? No, if we went to check out this woman's house, we would get murdered so quickly. (laughs) Remember he said international incident doesn't cover it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> like, <laughs> like, yeah, no, it's it's right there on the wall, bud. <laughs> Don't do it. No, but I want to touch the big red button. <laughs> <laughs> it's so pretty shiny. I want touch. <laughs> Dang it! All right, yeah. She knows. I just want you to know she knows. I mean, she's still there tonight. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you both you both sneak in with pantyhose over your head. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Make sure you bring your rope. Dun, dun, dun. The fucking, Kazim fucking... is literally humming dun 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 dun. dun, dun. <laughs> I was thinking of what the fuck movie is that? Uh Saving Silverman. <laughs> Where they go Oh my god. Oh yeah, they Where kidnap he's him. Like, mm-hmm. He's like Yeah. And he's like, he's like what? And he keeps doing hand signs. It's like He's like, I'm <laughs> eating a cheeseburger. He's like, he's like, he's like, I'm doing the army signals, bro. He's like, I don't know the army signals. I only know the navy signals. <laughs> that is a classic film. I love that film. Well, shit, it's already, uh, yeah, it's already 11:30, and I live 40 minutes away. And it's snowing. And it's snowing. Be a good stopping point, <laughs> boss. Before you two get eaten by her wolf hound. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's a big fucking dog. <laughs> Do we get Sigint for, from my stuff today, or is that like a future thing? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I was tempted to go one more day, unless you don't want to go one more day. No, I, I, yeah, I do one more, one more day. day. Roll it. Do it. Okay, so if you're not I mean, if you, I mean, else. if you don't care if I make it home safely. Let's go. <laughs> hey, yeah. you, can stay, you can stay here, Jeff. There's a bed right there. It's not very comfortable, but it's nice and cold down here. Um couple of things just because i think it would be important for your notes okay uh Arabini gets a phone call hello um yes let's play it this way Arabini gets a phone call Arabini gets the last scene okay it's uh uh johnston hey johnston how are you not bad not bad you, you find me anything f- yeah you owe me a favor <laughs> okay um so you had me looking into He's flipping papers just as I'm trying to find my spot in the book because I don't remember where this information is listed. It's actually Roy Hackman. I have the NSA contact name written on the back of my list. So, no, I so I thought it was Roy Hackman who then reached out to Johnston. There's a flow of information okay. here, and I'm not sure which way it is. It's either Johnston or Roy Hackman. I do like the name Roy Hackman a lot better, Yeah. so it may be Roy Hackman. Um, I know there was a Roy in there. Right? Well, so he reached out to somebody, and then it, it, it bounced around. So, like, it, it ended up, he tried one thing. Thing, and then he tried another thing with another angle. I have Johnston written down, but Al Johnston I've had down. But, um, He's writing this shit down. Irene Hovans Hovan Isai. Um, what do we got here? American, located on the air base in Qatar. You would know that. She's third generation Armenian Armenian American. Um, she is married, uh, but uses uh her family name uh for work, especially overseas. Uh, got a couple of bright kids, two of them. Elena. Elena is in Harvard and Mark attends MIT. I'm sure that's cheap. Um, what was the second one? Mark. Uh, obviously, um, assistant deputy director of Middle Eastern operations. Um, uh, but that's not really what you're here for. Nope. Um, here obviously, for we've talked about the kids' college bills. That's not cheap, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, it apparently looks like her husband has made some really shitty real estate investments. Um <clears throat> Got a name on him? Uh, uh, I do not. Not that I see anywhere written this. There goes your favor. <laughs> it's a joke. You can keep going. Um, uh, just, uh, I would say that if I were looking into this personally, this is, um, she's probably in danger of losing her security clearance if certain people say the right things. Um, cause obviously, you know, financial woes, right? Yeah, of course. Um, so yeah, that'd be my, uh, uh, that'd be my best tip. She's underwater on all of these properties. She's obviously got two kids attending two of the top schools in the nation. Um, and while she makes good money, she didn't make that much fucking money. So... If you're looking for leverage, that might be your angle. I said, you owe me. Any flows on how she's actually keeping it afloat? Hope, dreams, and credit card debt right now. Gotcha. It's unsustainable. Six months, maybe a year. Um, But that, uh, that housing market really fucked that entire family. Anything else I can do for you? Trying to think. Like I said, you owe me a favor. Sure. He hangs up. So right now we're we're friendly with Irene, but if she dries up, we have something to use against her. The phone rings again. Shit, my phone. 
uh, the the general sat phone in in headquarters there, which is our beanie's one of the few manning it. Yeah, uh, I think I'm the only one on base. Correct. Uh, I believe so. Uh, it's Irene. Hello. Uh, yeah. Uh, is uh, he usually talks to Jennifer, right? Yeah. Is Jennifer around? You can say no. It's fine. We'll keep going the way we are. Uh, nope. Uh, Not currently. I've got some information for your team. Okay. Um. Uh. Four days ago. Um. Something meeting your sort of. Bizarre statistics. I don't know what the fuck you folks are looking into. Uh, 23 members of a Shia militia unit. Um, and I can give it to you. It's you know, not something you're going to... I'm going to have to spell it out, but for the narrative. Um, 23 members of a Shia militia unit. Uh, the unit is called Kata'ib al-Imam Ali, which is the battalions of Iman Ali, uh, were found flayed alive, holding defensive positions around the village of Mahana. Supposedly, none were burned or suffered shrapnel or concussive damage. What was the location again? The Mahana. village of Mahana. Mahana, M-A-H-A-N-A. Got it. Now is when that success comes into play. Okay. So I like to imagine suddenly that Al Rabini is 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 like as he's on the phone with her, he's moving things around and, and like fuck. Uh, no, no, no. There was something here. There was something here. Hands. Right. <laughs> he's, he's got two keyboards that he's typing on at the same time. Right? <laughs> All the classic things. I love when I love when two people type on one keyboard because that's definitely how that works. <laughs> <laughs> um, Scooch, you were able to find out some further information. It was something that you had intended to look into, but hadn't really like it. It didn't all solidify until the filleted alive bit was what you know. Um, because what your details say is that um, the massacre of these twenty-three militia members uh, was officially blamed on ISIL um, explosives. Right? Uh, mm-hmm. Somebody blew up their their position. Right. However, now that you're digging in further, while you're on the phone with Irene and she's kind of going over the description, right? You begin to pull up some other information. Um, One eyewitness report uh, suggested that there was a cloud of insects prior to the attack. Hmm. Um, Another said evil jinn came from the sky and ground. But what you're able to find are actually were redacted and said instead it was ISIL explosives. Got you. Do you have Irene on the... Oh, go ahead. Whose reports say that it was ISIL explosives? The official... The official... um, It would be the, the coalition. So the Iraqi reports. Okay. You're pulling it up and it didn't say anything because it just said explosives. You thought nothing of it, but when she gave you the description of Flayed Alive, which didn't make it into the official report, you dug deeper than the official report and can find, like, somehow finding previous versions that show, in fact, the Flayed Alive and that they said the buzzing of insects and two gin did it. It looks... Like, later they were redacted, oh, they were hallucinating, we're filing a new report kind of a thing. The key being two. Right. And from the air and ground. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So you, unless you guys want to do anything else, I was going to leave you on the phone with Irene, having learned not only how you could potentially manipulate her, but also this new bit of information that you were looking for in the first place because it lines up with your new moon theory. Okay. What what are the significance of the people who were attacked and the location? She military they weren't isil yeah so they, these are coalition forces I, is, I assume yes they're definitely they are coalition they're coalition yeah. forces question is, is the coalition covering it up because they don't understand it or because they know something we don't i didn't look up i didn't look up where or is that somehow well or is that somehow being redacted on high? Oh, like with our program? Mm-hmm. Maybe. I don't know where Mahana is in relation to Mosul. When I search it, it's again one of those things where it's like clear on the other side of the fucking, mm-hmm. you know, provincial that's, that's area. What I, that's what I was going to try and look up. I'll look on my map again to see if it tells me. But again, the geography of this game continues to confuse me because... I feel like at this point, we're not ready to like play this burn Irene card. No. No, not at all. Yeah. And honestly, the way we... If we could... No, Mahana, we... Mahana is actually pretty distant i do have a map in here mahana is like mahana where it's showing up on your map is probably the mahana that you're thinking it's pretty far I, out there. i haven't looked on my okay. map but so it's it's like south of kirak when Kir- Kira. when it was unleashed at rasam's was it new moon time at that time or was it full moon time was there light in the sky i think we were like new it was ish. what march 23rd I believe so. Well, it couldn't have been that, right? Well, if it traveled to Mosul during that time, and then it was isolated in Mosul until the next new moon, and now it's making distance again. It would have, March 23rd, 2016 was the full moon. So we can conclude that its range expands then as the moon wanes. Well, I mean, we haven't we haven't seen anything since when? We haven't what? seen any kinds of attacks for how long? Well, there's been attacks. They've just all been isolated in Mosul. No, we've, we've gone a significant amount of time not seeing flayed bodies. 
right? Uh, so when you went in, they originally said that you haven't seen anything. The first report was that there had been no major activity since April 1, but you got there April... When was the tank crew killed? Because that's... April the, 7th. April 7th. That's the last one I remember. I mean, it feels like we've been playing a long time, but it's only been a few weeks, right? You got on the ground, it's I May think it was like April 2nd. It's now right. May. It's been a month. We've only been in country a month and a couple days. It's May 10th. <laughs> oh, it's May 10th. Yeah. Mm. Makes sense. Yeah, it's interesting. That so it's... if you want to be on the phone with her, you can in case there's something you want to do. Otherwise, we'll start up on the 10th with whatever actions you want to take. Um, you let your team we'll just say that she, we're, we're, we're going to. Um, April 7th was the new moon. Yeah. Mm. We're going to say for now, we're going to stay on the phone in case we think have of something. Think <laughs> of something to ask her between now and the next session. Okay. Smart choice. We'll see you guys next time. That ain't the way to have fun, son. That ain't the way to have fun, son. Our title track, Mama Told Me Not to Come, composed by friend of the podcast Ian Shannon, with additional vocals by Lucas Patterson and Cody Grady. You can find more of Ian's work at sleepfortheweary.com. Like what you heard? Check out more episodes online at rancorsbrothel.com, YouTube, or anywhere you can download podcasts. Enjoy talking nerdy? Follow the podcast with other listeners on the Fans of the Rancors Brothel Facebook page. Most of all, keep circulating the tapes. Much love, everybody. Is, I don't want to see the monitor.